namaste in the last video i told you about the sources and principles of civil engineering educated by indian scientists in this video let us now have a journey of civil engineering and architecture of prehistoric times that is indus valley civilization india's urban civilization traceable to mohenjo-daro and harappa were planned urban townships existed 5000 years ago from then onwards the ancient indian architecture and civil engineering continued to develop and grow the people of indus valley civilization were great builders the excavations carried out at different sites connected with indus valley civilization show that the people of the indus valley led a highly advanced urban life both Mohenjo-daro and Harappa were models of careful town planning. The principal streets all ran in straight lines either from north to south or from east to west in grid pattern and in places the main roads were 30 feet wide so that cars could pass without difficulty. The fronts of the houses were carefully lined up and no one was allowed to have the frontage of his house projecting beyond the building lines. There were no narrow side streets. Houses at street corners were slightly rounded to make the flow of traffic easy. Each street had a small water course covered with stone for drainage purposes. The twin cities of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa grew accordingly to a central plan that had been conceived at their foundation. The cities dominated by fortified citadels were carefully planned with their own water and sanitation systems and streets of brick built houses laid out in a grid pattern. The elaborate drainage system was a unique feature of the city. Almost every house had a well, drains and comfortable bathrooms for which pottery drain pipes and receptacles were laid down communicating them with the street drain of gutter. The main drains were provided with manholes at regular intervals for regular inspection and clearance. The cities were fairly large and skillfully designed. The dwelling houses were many and they varied in size from a big building with two rooms to a palatial structure having a frontage of 85 feet and a depth of 97 feet. The outer walls were 4 to 5 feet thick. The houses were built strongly of well-burnt modern looking red bricks cemented together with dried mud. The houses were very plain with narrow doors, flat roofs, no ornamentation and no windows. Inside, they offered a high degree of comfort. Many of them had spacious bedrooms, living rooms and guest rooms, a bath, running water, a fresh water tank and an enclosed garden. The big houses had two or more stories. They were finished with paved floors, courtyards, kitchens with raised platforms, excellent doors, windows and narrow stairways. In addition to dwelling houses, there were a few spacious buildings of elaborate structure and design. Some had large pillared halls. They were supposed to have been palaces, temples or municipal or public assembly halls. Among the larger buildings, the Great Granary is the most remarkable and the largest building discovered at Harappa. It measures 6.15 meters by 15.5 meters. The granary was built with sufficient knowledge of natural ventilation to prevent the grain from becoming mildewed. The most important structure in the city was the Great Bath. It consisted of a large quadrangle in the center with galleries and rooms on all sides, in some of which there were arrangements for hot water bath. The water was discharged by a large drain with a corbelled roof more than 2 meter in height. The Great Bath is 60 meter long and 36 meter wide and its outer walls are about 2.6 meter thick. In the center of the quadrangle was a large swimming enclosure 13 meter long, 7.5 meter wide and about 2.5 meter deep. It had a flight of steps at either end and was fed by a well situated in one of the adjoining rooms. We have even found a dockyard in Indus Valley civilization in Lothal situated near modern Ahmedabad. Lothal engineers accorded high priority to the creation of a dockyard and a warehouse to serve the purposes of naval trade. The dock 
was built on the eastern flank of the town and is regarded by archaeologists as an engineering feat of the highest order. It was located away from the main current of the river to avoid silting, but provided access to ships in high tide as well. It is speculated that Lothal engineers studied tidal movements and their effects on brick-built structures. Since the walls are of kiln-built bricks, this knowledge also enabled them to select Lothal's location in the first place as the Gulf of Kambath has the highest tidal amplitude and ships can be sluiced through flow tides in the river estuary. The engineers built a trapezoidal structure with north-south length of average 215 meters that is 705 feet and east-west width of 35 meters that is 115 feet. The warehouse was built close to the Acropolis on a 3.5 meter high podium of mud bricks. The rulers could thus supervise the activity on the dock and warehouse simultaneously. There was an important public building opposite to the warehouse whose superstructure has completely disappeared. Throughout their time, the city had to brace itself through multiple floods and storms. Dock and city peripheral walls were maintained efficiently. The town's zealous rebuilding ensured the growth and prosperity of the trade. All the construction were made of fire-dried bricks, lime and sand mortar and not by sun-dried bricks as bricks are still intact after 4,000 years and still bonded together with each other with the mortar bone. The city was divided into a citadel or acropolis and a lower town. The rulers of the town lived in the Acropolis, which featured paved paths, underground and surface drains built of kiln-burned bricks and portable water well. The lower town was subdivided into two sectors, a north-south arterial street with the main commercial area. It was flanked by shops of rich and ordinary merchants and craftsmen. The residential area was located to either side of the marketplace. The scientific survey of Indus Valley Civilization clearly provides an engineering feat of the highest order. Please check the next video for the jaw-dropping marvels of civil engineering in ancient India. If you want to know more about science and technology in ancient India, please check the playlist Science and Technology in Ancient India, wherein you can find videos on mathematics, astronomy, alchemy, metallurgy and other such subjects and also scientists of ancient India wherein you can find videos on astronomers, mathematicians, alchemists, surgeons and other scientists of India. If you have liked the video, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you.